first I came up with the basic plot, you know, just a little girl pretending to be a little boy. And that was like a few years ago. And I just like wrote it somewhere and forget all about it. And then I did some other stuff. I did screenwriting and everything. And then I had the urge to do a second film. And I wanted to make it really fast, like like kind of a utopia. You know, I woke up one day and said, oh, it was March 2010. I said, I'm going to make a movie in August. I'm going to shoot this summer. And so I remember that story. And I thought it was perfect because it's a story about childhood, so I guess it will benefit from this crazy energy I wanted to bring. Um, and also, it was like the perfect balance between something quite intimate, something like I want to talk about uh, sexual identity. and uh, So it was like a subject, but it has like the freshness of the childhood angle. And it had that storyline of a thriller, like kind of an action movie, you know, an insider somebody suddenly lying and having double identities. So I like the balance between yeah, strong storytelling, intimate sort of subject that I'm strongly committed with and and this energy of childhood that would give me like that would get me crazy and it did. Well the whole casting process went really fast as do all the movie. I mean like I said I wrote it in like three weeks and then I had only three weeks to complete the casting, which was like a big challenge because to find the perfect girl, the little girl that would look like a boy and could be a good performer, I thought I'm never gonna find her. So um I went through a very pragmatic process, uh, because I was on such a tight schedule. I, I spread the words around casting directors and in agency that I was looking for. Uh, uh, a little tomboy, and the word came back that this, there was this girl, Zoe Hill, uh, who was an actress but wasn't performing much because she was too different. So I met her right away the first day of casting, and she got into the room, and I just fell for her totally because she had that incredible face. She totally androgyn androgynous, but far more important, very photogenic, and. Uh, she talked to me about her life, like she's really this outdoor little girl playing football with the boys and I'm thinking, okay, that's her. So then I built the whole casting around her, like uh, the second big part was the little sister. And um, well, it's really hard to figure out whether, whether a six-year-old girl is going to be a good actress or not. She can be good, sometimes bad, sometimes very mannered, sometimes not baby talking. Um, so what mattered really was the relationship they could they could have. So I put the two of them in a room and they started fighting just right away. So I thought this is this is this could be two sisters. Um, and Manon Levana is really well. She's really cute. She was she had really, she really had the looks that I was looking for. Very feminine little girl, chubby feminine little girl, um, and also she's very witty. You, you could tell when you, when you watch the movie that she's witty and she really wanted to be part of this so that mattered a lot you know that the child the children was, would, would be committed to the parts and the project so she got along and then for the rest of the kids uh, I picked Zoe's real friend in life you know I said bring the friends you like and um, they all came and I took them all I didn't pick you know, I said okay you're all part of this the point was to raise questions and not to give answers at all. And the movie is really open to all the hypotheses of what should we do, what should, what will she become. Um, there's no answer, and I think uh, um, that's why it's interesting. Actually, it's not a way to avoid the answer. It's a way to include them all and say there's no drama. There could be no drama. So. Um, the movie basically is not about why she's doing all this, you know, it doesn't tell, uh, it's all about how she's doing it. Um, and I think that's pretty fair to childhood, because it's not a moment where you really, you know, where you think about everything you're doing, where you project yourself, you have a very, very low projection, you think, you're thinking about, I want that video game, or there's somebody's birthday next week, or you project in a very long time, well, I you will know, be a grown up. I'll have tons of money, you know, um, but you know, that, so it's it's not a mental film, you know, you, you don't, um, so it, it kind of leaves everybody with the questions and their own answer, so that's what matters to me.
to bring fiction to something, you have to know it a little bit. If I was doing a movie about uh, a woman in her 70s, I wouldn't know anything about that. So I guess I would really stick to the cliché. Uh, whereas talking about something has been true, as everybody, um, well, it, it brings the distance, the right distance. Um, and also, as a rookie director, you know, uh, coming of age stories allow me, allowed me, and young cast allow me to invent my own method and decide who I am, how I want to tell things, how I want to direct actors, you know. There's no, yeah, there was no pre method, you know, I didn't know. When I first when I did my first film, I had never directed a movie, not even a short one. So, so I thought, yeah, I like the fact that as a young director, uh, I was working with young people and we were growing up together. But now I'm old, so I guess I should stop. Um, and how do I do it? Well, um, you know, that's my secret. No, I'm gonna tell. Uh, it's all about creating a good relationship with the cast. I mean, it's not the same between teenagers and children, so I'm not going to talk about teenagers because that's another movie. Um, but with children, it's yeah, mostly about the trust you have and how you are. You have to find the right balance between the authority and being accurate and treating them like actors, so asking them very precise things and getting them focused and talking to them about the goals of the character and everything. So just like with any regular actor. And in the, in the same time, making this a big game, forgetting about the camera and really being physical. I mean, when they dance, I dance. When they sing, I sing. Uh, well, the shooting was 20 days, which is really, really short. Like for my film, first film, the shooting was like 36 days. Uh, so 20 days, you're shooting two to three scenes a day. Uh, so you and the children legally they can stay long on the set plus uh, biologically they just doze off you know so they they, they can't stay for just very long so uh it's all this crazy energy when you never stop like in the film for instance all the football sequences so there, there's a lot of them it's all shot in one day so uh, when she goes to pee in the forest and everything this is all one day um, so it's crazy. Um, to get them to focus well, yeah. Uh, it depends on, there's not, it's not the same atmosphere when you're shooting with one kid or two kids. You create an intimate atmosphere, you're with them, you talk very low, it's all about being gentle and everything. Um, and you put them really in the scene, it's something between you and them, you know. And most of the scenes like that, um, Law is acting like a girl, so I, you direct her like a girl. Um, but then with the group scenes, when there are a lot of kids, you're kind of yelling, you're, you're trying, you're more chore choreographer. Uh, so it's not intimate, it's more masculine, so, and that's when she has to play the boy. So that's, you, you put her in different states, you know, in different um, state of concentration also. Well, you know, when you, it's all, when you shoot a scene, you're always about what's the right distance. Um, and I like to think in contrast. Uh, so, intimacy is not about close up. You know, something you, in the scene you're describing <clears throat> whether the girl is left alone, uh, we're far away, but we feel so close to her. So, it's always about finding the right distance and yeah, building contrast between extreme close up where not to get close to them, but to get, because it's sensual also, you know, when, when the two sisters, they're holding each other, you want, you want to be part of it, you want to be part of the hug. Um, but basically, I'm obsessed with faces and how you can share somebody's loneliness in a face. And with choreography also, and there's wide, shots because they, when they're, the children are playing because I want to portray their rituals and how the body language and how it's all a, a kind of ballet, you know. So that's the two main things that I really like in a movie. Uh, it's you know, to share the intimacy and to be also in the choreography. So that explains 
a lot of my choices actually. I think it's really scary to, sh to shoot with kids because of the legal restriction, because of yeah the parents being there, because of the fact that we have to do it very fast and they could you know you, you can't be sure that they're always going to be focused and uh, and that I, I had never directed any kids you know teenagers are really different you can share the, the, the movie with them you can share the vision you know with a child you, you're more lonely because you're in charge you know and, um, so yeah if I had known how difficult it would be maybe I wouldn't have done it it would have been really bad that I didn't do it but um, I'm really, I'm really glad I did, but, but you know, you 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 don't realize when you're in the middle of it because also there's a lot of fulfilling moments, you know, when they give you that strong natural feeling. You just, I was thinking, this is what cinema should always be about, you know. So you feel like it's so true and it's so genuine. You, it's, um, it's, I'm still amazed, you know, at some moment of the movie when the, the performance is perfect. Like for instance, my favorite scene in the film is when the two sisters, they are in the bed at night and they're playing um, Guess Who It Is, you know. And it lasts for three minutes and it's... And they have the perfect timing. And we did actually like 20 takes of this to get it like perfectly. And it's to, I'm still amazed at this sequence. I'm always moved because this is like a real acting thing that they've done. So it was really hard. Also really fun to share that with them, and in the end, I, I feel so proud of them. You know, I think they've, they've done such great performances, so I won't do it again, but I'm glad I did. The first spectators were the children that made the film, so I was quite anxious to get their reaction. They were really, really happy with it. And then, actually, as the film became quite a success in France, it became kind of a kind of family film. Um, it worked a lot on the weekend and on the Wednesday where family go to cinema, so it was quite a surprise. It was really, really um, a bliss because I was really hoping that kid would see the film. Um, and since then it's been integrated in the school program in France, so it's going to be shown in primary schools and in high school. So I guess lo loads of kids are going to see it. So uh, yeah, politically and it's really cool. I had a lot of tomboy experience as a child. Um, yeah, I was kind of a, of a tomboy. I mean, I had short hair and and I, and I could be mistaken for a boy. You know, it happened. I wasn't really looking for it, but I remember I was glad when it was happening. You know, but, hey, I found it really cool. Um, and I was an outdoor little girl. Yeah, growing up in the suburbs and always playing football so so. And, yeah, and my sister was quite. Uh, feminine kind so I guess there's a lot of yeah my own memories in it but you know as I've been traveling with the movie uh, the thing that really strikes me is how everyone's a lot of people are telling me this is my childhood girls boys uh, grandmothers telling me this is my childhood in the 40s you know we weren't allowed to, to wear trousers I'm like oh <laughs> so I find it amazing how yeah the movie is intimate, but it's intimate for a lot of people. That's really weird.